this impetuous fellow used two dabs. Now he's in trouble. We cannot be responsible. We warned him that Brill Cream is a most extraordinary effect on women. They simply can't resist you. So once again... Clint Walker. Clint Walker was an American actor, born with his twin sister named Naoma Lucy on the 30th of May, 1927, in Hartford, Illinois, USA. He's known for appearing in various Western movies and series, though he was particularly recognized for his starring role in the long-running TV series Cheyenne. Norman Eugene Walker was the son of Paul Arnold Walker and Gladys Schwanda of Czech origin. Norman liked Western movies and, as a kid, admired actors and personalities such as Roy Rogers, Buck Jones, and Gene Autry. A simple reminder how to enter our brand new giveaway. We will be giving away either iPhone Max, iPad Mini, or MacBook Pro. It's really your choice. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. Despite his love for fiction, Young Norman didn't have much time to spend indulging in TV shows and other types of entertainment because he started working at nine years of age. As he revealed in an interview with Classic Images, I'd go to the carnivals and circuses and get various jobs. I'd either carry water, set up milk bottles, or bring back the baseballs. I'd get jobs at the grocery store cleaning up. As I got older, I would shovel snow in the winter, mow lawns, and caddy for golfers in the summer. Entering the workforce at such a young age definitely impeded him in enjoying basic childhood experiences. People are surprised when I tell them that I didn't play football in high school with my size and strength. I couldn't. I was always working. Walker dropped out of high school in his teens to work full-time at a paper mill. Then, he obtained a job loading boxes that he kept until he was 18 years old when he enlisted into the U.S. Merchant Marine. However, even during his time in the service, he obtained various odd jobs to sustain himself. His time serving the country wasn't long, as World War II ended soon after he joined up, and Norman found himself searching for ways to sustain himself once again, obtaining jobs as a door-to-door -door seller of a variety of things, such as vacuum cleaners, insurances, and cars. Already acquainted with Los Angeles from his time serving in the Marines, Norman moved to the city to work in construction, but didn't last in that job and once again moved, this time to Texas where he started working as a carpenter for a large company. Things didn't work out for him once again, and he found himself returning to California. I started to figure out what was the best thing I had to offer. I decided on my size, so I got into the law enforcement game. That's how he found a job in a private investigation agency during the day and as a club bouncer at night in Long Beach. With the experience earned during that time, he went to Las Vegas to work as a security guard in the Sands Hotel. It was during the year and a half he worked there that various people suggested to him that he try to obtain a role in Hollywood productions. Although at first, Norman disregarded those ideas. He eventually considered things from a different point of view, considering that his current job was too dangerous and didn't offer him many life opportunities. So he quit and returned to California. Once in Hollywood, Norman's height and overall well-built appearance helped him land his first small role in the 1954 movie, Jungle Gents. Advised to change his given name for one more fitting for the industry, Norman acquired a name he admittedly hated, Jet Norman. He then met Henry Wilcoxon, an actor already experienced in the industry, who advised him on the basics of how Hollywood works and helped Norman to audition for Cecile B. DeMille's movie, The Ten Commandments. Despite the help, Norman's opportunity to land his first important role was almost ruined. When on his way to the studio, he stopped to help a woman change her tire, arriving late for his date with DeMille. I knew my career might be over before I even started. Apologies weren't necessary though as an unexpected turn of events was waiting for Norman when he finally met with the man. The unknown woman turned out to be the director's secretary. Thus, Norman wasn't discounted for the role, but was instead cast as Sardinian captain. Unfortunately, his character was taken out of the scene, actually for standing out compared to other actors on the set. Norman's time in the Ten Commandments wasn't wasted though, as the screen tests he did during the filming process caught the attention of the Warner Brothers producers, who were looking for new towns to produce a new series. It was then that Norman finally adopted his stage name of Clint Walker and auditioned for the network. The first day, I was very, very nervous. I could see all these people that I'd seen in the pictures over the years, and I thought, I don't stand a chance. The second day, I thought, 
I'm not gonna get the job anyway, so why don't I just relax and enjoy it? His gut feeling was indeed correct, and a few days after his audition, Clint Walker was notified that he'd landed the role of Cheyenne Bodhi, the iconic protagonist of the Western series Cheyenne, which not only brought him fame, but also became one of the most important and profitable series of Warner Brothers from 1955 until its end in 1962. The end of Cheyenne was caused by Walker's decision to leave the series, as he felt his contract was holding him back from obtaining other professional opportunities. Years after the end of the show, Clint confessed that he regretted his decisions. I should have been wiser financially. I would have done what Jim Arness did with Gunsmoke. They would have given me the show at the time. They would have given me just about anything I wanted. His professional career after Cheyenne wasn't over, and he landed a variety of roles in many productions. Some of Clint's most memorable characters were in movies The Night of the Grizzly and The Dirty Dozen. He also starred in Baker's Hawk and was the villain in Scream of the Wolf. The last production he participated in was Small Soldiers, an adventure-themed animated series premiered in 1998, in which he voiced Nick Nitro's character. In his personal life, Clint Walker married for the first time in 1948 to Verna Garver. The couple had a daughter named Valerie and shared two decades together until their divorce in 1968. Six years later, Clint married Giselle Hennessy, and their marriage also lasted 20 years until she died in 1994. In 1997, Clint married Susan Cavallari and became her three children's stepfather. They remained together until his passing. Although Clint Walker enjoyed a good health during the major part of his life, he experienced a life-endangering experience when in 1971 he fell from a ski lift partially piercing his heart with a pole in the unfortunate event. However, he made a quick recovery and was back at work in less than two months. On the 21st of May 2018, Clint Walker died of a heart failure at 90 years of age in his home in Grass Valley, California. At the time of his passing, Clint Walker had an estimated net worth of over $4 million as a result of his long career as a Hollywood actor. Physically, Clint was a very handsome man, which was decidedly one of the reasons he was considered for his many roles in Hollywood. His athletic build gave him a tough appearance and his most distinguishable physical characteristics were his slim waist, deep voice, and attractive features. Although his weight was unknown, he was 6 feet 6 inches, or close to 2 meters tall. Clint was often described as a mountain man for his tough and strong appearance. Some other interesting facts about Clint include that his twin sister Naoma tried to defend him from bullies when they were 12 years old, though the episode didn't end well for them as she accidentally hit Clint. I rolled over on the ground and saw her sitting on the ground crying. That ended the fight right there. Naoma died at 73 years old in the year 2000. In 1960, Clint was given a star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame, and he also received a Golden Boot Award in 1997. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.